Horror is a tricky genre to be working in. It's mostly thankless as everyone thinks it's cheap and easy, but also hollow and meaningless. Your work will sometimes be appreciated by a small number of people, but you'll never be held on the same pedestal as filmmakers in other genres. But God damn it, horror is hard. Most horror movies head down the road of cheap tactics to generate what I'm going to call scares. These are temporary jump moments which utilize jump cuts and sudden noises. While scares do get the heart racing, ultimately they're cheap and they require very little skill to execute. Some horror movies prefer to generate fear. Fear is hard to create because it's sustained, it's built gradually, but at the same time, is stopped right before you begin to get accustomed to it. This is the area that John Carpenter excels. Generating fear is harder because you can't do it with just a scare. A scare can be part of generating fear, but a scare alone won't work because the feeling left by a scare fades as soon as the scare stops. Carpenter does this by manipulating our primal fears and his tools for this manipulation are his camera and lighting. The most universal fears are fear of darkness, fear of isolation, paranoia, and fear of death. The staple of John Carpenter movies is that they're usually made for a fraction of the budget that other movies are made for. This presents some limitations for him as a horror director. He can't have big fancy scary supernatural effects because he can't afford them. Even the lack of lighting in his films is partly due to the fact that his movies often don't have budget or time for big lighting setups. But rather than see this as a limitation, he turns the limitation into a strength by using lighting to create the first of our fears. Fear of the dark. It would be easy and dismissive to say that this effect is created simply by making it dark. If every scene were just dark all round, not only would it be pretty shitty for us to look at, but it wouldn't work. See, human beings are pretty hardy things. We adapt to pretty extreme situations. Psychologically, this is referred to as desensitization. The more you experience something, the less pronounced its effect is. Carpenter is particular about how and when he uses light to intensify our fear of the dark. It's the contrast between light and dark which generates this fear because at the back of our mind, we're always thinking about what is lurking in the shadows. We think that there must be something there, or why would he choose to include it in the shot? In this shot from the fog, Carpenter intentionally includes a lot of black space in the frame. Our expectation is that there is a reason for it. In that darkness, something hides, or it wouldn't have been included at all. This builds anticipation and manipulates what we expect to see giving him control of our senses. Throughout the film Halloween, Carpenter uses darkness as a literal barrier between where it's safe and where it isn't. Inside the houses of Haddonfield is well lit. We can see what things may be lurking there and it feels safe. This is amplified by the fact that all the murders, except the very first, happen in the dark. So when the movie is dark at any point, there is an expectation that something bad will happen. Our innate fear of the dark works in much the same way. We feel on an almost bioevolutionary level that if anything bad is going to happen, it's likely to happen in the dark. Some predators often hunt at night time when their prey is most likely to be resting. Carpenter treats darkness like a predator stalking its prey. Quite often when the darkness is creeping up on its victims, the camera work switches to a more subjective viewpoint placing the audience in the position of the characters, making us feel as though the darkness is stalking us. This is something he repeats in The Thing. When the room is lit well and there is no danger, the camera angle is more objective. But once the darkness starts to creep in, the camera work becomes more subjective, reflecting what fear of the dark is like. It's different for everyone. It's a fear which is sometimes irrational, yet always feels justified. It's a very personal experience. We as both people and a society have a fear of death. The fact that money, status, health and celebrity doesn't protect you from death is what makes it scary. It can come for you at any age and use a variety of methods. 
Pretty much all John Carpenter's horror films manipulate this fear. In Halloween, Michael Myers is the anthropomorphized death. In fact, in the very first movie, his character's name isn't even Michael Myers. The character list refers to him as the shape. Myers has all the characteristics we normally associate with death. Unstoppable, unavoidable, unrelenting, cruel, indiscriminate. It's a supernatural force which can appear suddenly without warning or reason. It can't be bargained with and it feels no pity. Myers is often framed in the background or foreground when stalking his victims and they largely don't notice his presence until it's time for him to kill them. This mirrors our relationship with death. We rarely think about it until we have our own brush with it. The thing and the fog do something similar. Again, death is anthropomorphized and bears the same characteristics. This unstoppable force which takes you when it wants to. The characters in all these movies are literally chased around by death. The film reminds us that death can't be stopped and even when the characters seem as though they've escaped death, the ending to each movie shows us that death can't be escaped. Carpenter enjoys playing with our feelings of paranoia by making us question whether what we see is real or simply part of a paranoid hallucination. Halloween does this from Laurie's perspective. The camera adopts her perspective when she catches glimpses of Michael early in the film, but each time she double checks, he disappears. It's always from her subjective viewpoint, so we can never really be sure if she actually saw him or if she imagined it, since the only time he does this disappearing act is when she is the only person to see him. Whenever other characters see him, he doesn't do any spooky, instantaneous disappearings after they've seen him, leading us to question if he does have supernatural powers or if Laurie is just imagining those moments. Carpenter makes us feel the character's paranoia by placing us in her perspective and then almost immediately giving us the objective perspective of a character outside her subjective experience to prove that he's not there. For two thirds of the movie, this pattern continues to slowly build our level of paranoia and by extension increase our level of fear. Do we trust what we see when so many times it's been proven to be false? At the beginning of the movie, when the paranoia about who is the thing is yet to set in, the characters are often not only in the same scene together, but quite commonly share the same frame in wide shots, two shots and three shots to highlight that this is a team that trusts each other. Later, when the team realizes that anyone can be the thing, people start to get framed in singles or in opposing angles to highlight the conflict and mistrust between them. This also puts us in the position of not knowing who can be trusted, with the exception of McCready, who has been framed in singles from the very beginning. We know he isn't the thing because the camera is treating him the same way as it did in the beginning. This technique of reducing how many characters share the same frame is done so slowly that we barely even notice that by the end of the movie, nobody shares the frame. This fear is visually represented differently in his films, but he still does a great job using his camera work to show and amplify the isolation of characters. In Halloween, this is primarily shown through framing and shot composition. We can see from earlier shots that Haddonfield is a small but reasonably well populated town, but we rarely see any other characters besides our principal cast. By constantly having so few people in the shot, it also creates a sense of physical isolation between ourselves and the rest of the world. To amplify this, Carpenter often uses wide angle lenses and wide shots to shoot our victims leaving large amounts of empty space in the frame giving a visual demonstration of their isolation, even when they aren't aware that it exists. In The Thing, this is demonstrated by giving wide shots of the location to show that these characters are literally separated from the entire world by a cold and harsh barrier which none of them can escape through. The shots themselves are often composed of still landscapes, or if the shot is a character, they will often be the only thing moving in the shot. Signs of life are restricted and signs of humanity decrease as the movie progresses and the characters descend into intense paranoia. In the fog, it's the fog which creates the isolation. It begins by enveloping the town and cutting it off from the rest of the country before spreading inside the town and isolating individuals. Each time the effect is the same. Isolation means the characters and by extension the audience are trapped in a state of claustrophobic isolation. There aren't many examples to choose from, but when Carpenter does horror well, he really understands what it, it is that creates that feeling of sustained fear and panic, which many other films don't even bother to attempt. He turned low budget limitations into strengths. 
As an indie filmmaker, Carpenter is an inspiration. As a horror filmmaker, he can be genuinely fear-inducing.